Hey y'all, welcome back to my modern homestead. My name is Janet. For those of you who are new here, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. For those of you who are returning, welcome back. So you guys, let's talk canning because I get several questions on my channel when I can things and I think some people are kind of misinformed. So let's talk about this for just a minute. What do you do when you get started canning? You get your canner out, of course, duh. But, y'all, if you've never canned before and you've never looked at the instruction book, that's where you need to start. What we want to do is go through my two different canners. I have a Presto 16 quart and an All American 930. Now, one of the biggest questions I get and one that I always had to look up when I first started canning was, how much water do you put in this canner? Because, you know, when you can, canning's canning, right? They all work the same, right? Yes, but no. I searched down my manuals because I wanted to make sure I gave you the right information. This canner, my Presto over here, I used it for years. That's what I started with. It's almost as old as my kids. But I wanted to go back and make sure that I gave you the right information. Because you don't start with the same amount of water in these two canners. Uh-uh. Nope. In this one, the Presto, you want to start with three quarts. Oh, see, I almost messed up. Three quarts of water before you ever put the jars in. Now, what happens after you put the jars in? Well worry about that because what we're worried about is what the manual tells us to. If some of the water rises over the jars, it's okay. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Just make sure you start with the three quarts. This one, you start with three inches. Yep, see, it's right there. I highlighted it just for you. It says you should use two to three inches of hot water in the bottom of the canner before, before you place the filled jars on the rack. So see guys, they're not the same. What happens in them after you get them filled and get them sealed, what happens inside the canner will be the same, but not what happens until you get there. But that's not all the differences. Let's go talk about it. Okay, let's start with our Presto. I've got three quarts of water. One, two, oh, that one's empty, and three. Let's get these filled and pretend we're canning something. Okay, here we go. We've got our jars. I have four quarts. Four quarts in the Presto. Let's talk about the All-American. Let's get our three inches of water into the canner first. Let's see. We're pretty close when we use this pot full of water, but I always keep a ruler handy. This is a clear ruler so I can see through it no matter which way it's facing. Let's measure. are right at three inches. Now this, it says two and a half to three inches. It's right at the three inches, so I'm going to call it good. All right, Janet, we got the water in the canners. Now what? I'm glad you asked. Here is our top for the Presto canner. You'll notice a few differences in just a minute, but here we have this little, don't know the technical terms, this little knob thing that pops up. We've got the stand, and we've got another little safety button. I don't know what to call it. Anyway, also on the inside, the Presto and several other canners have a gasket. And this gasket needs to be checked often and oiled with vegetable oil to make sure it's not dry or cracked. If it's dry or cracked, or if it's been several years, you might want to replace it. You also want to look through the hole not really focusing, but there is a hole 
you want to look and make sure there's nothing blocking it from the bottom side to the top side because that could spell disaster. So, now on our canner, there is a little V on the handle. You wanna take that V and line it up with the V on the lid. So here we go. Once it's lined up, you just twist it till the handles line up and it won't move anymore. And you turn it on and it's going to come up to pressure. But we'll talk about that in just a minute. Let's move on to the All-American. Let me put some jars in that one. Okay, we have our jars. Look at that one. Ooh, don't use a rusty jar when you're canning. But since we're just pretend canning, I'm just going to pop it in there. We're not even going to put lids on it, but we're going to pretend there are lids. So I have four quarts. There we go. This canner will actually hold seven quarts on the bottom and seven quarts on the top. So now let's put the lid on this one. But let's talk about the differences. There is no gasket on the All-American. It seals metal to metal. And when you start canning in it, you want to use Vaseline or vegetable oil and go around the rim of the canner on the outside on the lid. And then also around the lip where it will connect with the canner lid. Now this one will also use a weight, but it has a gauge too. This should be checked by the county extension office once a year. If you're not real sure about it, always use your ear with the jiggler. Now, we're gonna talk about the jiggler in just a second, but let's get the lid on. This also has an arrow on the lid right there, and you will line it up with the arrow on the canner. And with this one, you want to check it. If you've watched any of my canning videos, you're welcome to go back, but if you haven't, always make sure that the lid is sitting even on the canner, just as even as you can get it. You'll never be perfect. Okay, we have the canner turned. There's the little notch here. So, we'll line the arrow up with that notch. There we go, and it sits down all nice and pretty. And once you think you have it pretty even around the edges, this is also important. Don't go around in a circle tightening these lug nuts, wing nuts, lug nuts, whatever they are. You want to sh um, fasten them down slightly on opposite sides. Because if you fasten all these down on this side, it's going to push this part of the lid down and the back of the lid up. And you don't want that, you want it even. And once you get them, oh, don't hit your head. <laughs> once you get them all snug, go around and make sure that it's even and go ahead and lock them down as best you can. Don't go get a wrench or anything, just use your hands. And also, we're going to turn this up now. The temperature of your stove also matters. At my old house, I could not turn my eyes on high. On this house, I can't turn my eyes off a of high. So get to know your canner on your stove. When I first got my canner, I practiced just like I'm doing right now. Sometimes I had jars, sometimes I didn't. I just wanted to know how my canner reacted on my stove. And it's important that you do that too before you try to can anything to know what you need to do ahead of time. So all we do at this point is just let these come up and they're going to start venting. So let's talk about venting for just a minute. Now, I've seen some videos where people are venting so hard that it is, the steam is just billowing, billowing, billowing like a smokestack in Texas. You don't want to. Well, I guess you can. I mean, I don't like to go that high. I like to keep mine slow and steady. Sometimes you can see the steam. Sometimes you can't. But always make sure that you can hear it and feel it. That way you know it's venting. If you can see it, and, uh, not see it, hear it and feel it, you can start your timer for 10 minutes. You don't have to have a smokestack coming out of this. 
And let me tell you one reason I don't like to do that is because you can run your canner dry. Now, if you can too high, too hot, you can ruin your canner. You can run it dry, and if you run it dry, it's going to warp the bottom. You can possibly blow the jiggler off and have a disaster in your kitchen. I don't want a disaster in my kitchen. I have too much going on in my life for disasters. So, that's how I do it. And also at the, mm, we'll come back to that. Let's just hold on to that thought. Let's just get these to venting first. I just realized I forgot to tell you that on the All-American, there is also the little black button. That, that is a safety valve. Should this either canner, the pressure get too high in it, that little button is going to pop. It's going to pop right out and steam and pressure are going to release out of there first. Those are the safety measures on new canners to try to keep your canner safe so that the lid doesn't blow off. If the lid should ever happen to blow off, you, need, you know you did something serious wrong because that button should always pop first. So I didn't show it to you on the lid on that one, but it's there. While we're waiting on these to come up and vent, I want to tell you any part on these canners that I have mentioned today can be replaced. That's one reason more that you want to hold on to your manual that comes with the canner. Don't toss it as soon as you get it. It's important. In the back of those manuals, it tells you how to order replacement parts. Now, this one is really getting going. I can hear it. Remember the little metal thing that I showed you that's on the front, that little, I wish I knew what to call it, valve, stem, whatever it is that pops up. A lot of times when you're waiting for this to come up to pressure, that will pop up. And that's okay. Don't worry about that. The one you're worried about popping and blowing is the little black one in the back. But it shouldn't. We don't even have a jiggler on here yet. We're just waiting to feel steam come out of this stem. Okay, so if some crazy lady is on YouTube telling you how to use your canner, she really should know what parts are, are called on the canner. So let me tell you, this little metal part, this is the air vent cover lock. I might have not known the word, but I knew what to do with it or what it was for. So that is the um, air vent cover lock. And this part vent, the steamer, the, oh, what is gracious, the canner. That's called the vent. That's what it is. It's the vent stem. <laughs> and also it. I've forgotten this part because it's been a thousand years since I've used this canner, but it also says that you can put a little bit of oil on this part of your canner. So see, it's important to reread your manual. Even the crazy lady on YouTube needs to reread it every now and then. Oh, and the black plug I was telling you about, that's the overpressure plug. Can't say I didn't tell you. I might not have known, but I knew how to find the answer, and you need to know how to find the answer, too. Okay, y'all, I feel steam coming out of the vent stem on this one, so we will set the timer for 10 minutes, and then we can put on the weight. Okay, I feel steam coming out of the All-American. So let's set the timer for 10 minutes for that canner, too. Okay, we have just a few minutes before our timer goes off. So while we're waiting on that, let's take a look at the weights that go on the different canners. This is for the Presto. And depending on what you're canning and where you're locating, like located as far as altitude, that will determine how much weight you use. This alone is five pounds of pressure. If you add one of the metal discs, that is 10 pounds of pressure. But if you add two, pound, uh, two of the discs, that is 15 pounds of pressure. Now where I live, most things I do are only, in fact, I don't think I've ever used anything different other than 10 pounds. So that's just for the Presto. And we're gonna talk about the movement of it, so don't go anywhere. Now this is for the All-American, and as you can see, there are three holes 
If you use it this way, that's five pounds of pressure. If you turn it and use this hole, that's 10 pounds of pressure. And if you turn it and use this hole, that's 15 pounds of pressure. And again, where I live, I use 10 for most things. I haven't yet found anything that I use other than 10 pounds. Did I do it for my milk? I don't think so. I think I used 10 pounds. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Just always check and make sure you know. And besides, I shouldn't be doing milk anyway, so just forget I said that. Okay, our time is almost up, and you can hear the air lock, the vent lock, the whatever we called it, that lock thing. Sometimes you'll hear it rattle and water will stop, start coming out of it. And sometimes it will pop before your 10 minutes is over. And that's okay, just watch it. All that means is that there is pressure inside of that canner. If that metal thing comes up, there's pressure. If the metal thing's down, there's no pressure. It's easy as that. There's our timer now letting us know we have one minute. So hold on just a second. Okay, it's time to put on our weight. I don't need 15, let's just go with 10. But if you need 15, use 15. So I just stick it on there. You're going to notice that pretty soon, this, what did we call it? I keep forgetting. The air vent cover lock. Why can't I remember that? That's going to come up and let us know there's pressure. That doesn't mean there's enough pressure. The only way we'll know there's enough pressure is when this thing starts rocking. And since we're talking about the rocking, how fast should it rock? Guys, you don't want this thing rocking so fast like it's gonna blow off. Uh-uh, that will run your canner dry. You should have a, see, it came up, now we have pressure. We've got to let it come up to 10 pounds of pressure. Now, this should be a happy rock, a gentle rock, not a wild, crazy rock. If that is rocking wild and crazy, we'll turn the temperature down. But if you are gradually turning it down, you should be able to keep it right about where you want it. So now we're just waiting on the All-American. There we go, the All-American's ready. We're going to put the weight on at 10 pounds of pressure. Now, on this one, we'll know it's just about ready when the gauge comes up and shows 11 pounds of pressure. I really should study my manual more. I can't give you a good answer for that one. But I know how you can find the answer. Check out your manual. I don't know why the gauge says 11 pounds and the weight says 10 pounds. I normally go by the weight and the way it's jiggling because that's not going to lie to me. The gauge could be off and tell me a story if I haven't had it checked, so I always use and go by ear. So let's just wait for these to start moving. While we wait for these to come up to 10 pounds, 10 pounds of pressure, let me tell you about the All-American since I told you about the Presto. Now, with this jiggler, the weight, I really should look in my manual and find the right answer, well, whatever that is. Anyway, unlike the Presto weight, this is not going to rock and jiggle constantly. If it is, you need to turn it down. It's going too fast, it's too hot. This should only move one to three times a minute. That's it guys, one to three times. If I'm in the kitchen, I like to kind of keep an eye on my timer between the jiggles just to kind of know where I'm at. If the um, heat needs to come up a little, go down a little, it should stay pretty steady. You shouldn't have to do too much adjustment, especially if you're using a gas stove. Gas stoves are much easier to regulate. I don't recommend a glass top stove, an electric stove, but sometimes you just have to do what you got to do. If you're able, check the manual for your stove to make sure you're supposed to can on it. That bubbling under there is normal. It should stop completely or at least slow down by the time it comes up to 10 pounds of pressure. And remember, the only way we know that there are, is 10 pounds of pressure is if that weight is rocking. This tab only lets us know that there is pressure. That doesn't mean there's 10. Pressure is building. 
Okay. Got some action going on. So I know it's just now coming to 10 pounds of pressure. I give it just a minute or two, and then I go ahead and set the timer. And then you're ready to go. Remember, if it's rocking, there are 10 pounds of pressure. It won't rock unless there is 10 pounds of pressure. <laughs> okay, I think you're good to go ahead and set that timer now for whatever time you need. You want to keep it at a slow rock. You don't want the thing going crazy. Okay, if you start the angry movement, just start bumping the temperature down a little at a time until you get back to a slow, steady rock. Don't turn it all down at once, just little nudges of the knob at a time. Almost there with this one. Okay, Noisy Nessie here is going to steal the show from this one. So let's go ahead and pretend that we have canned for however many minutes we need. All we need to do at this point is turn the eye off. That's it. Don't do anything else. Don't. I try not to even move it, but definitely don't do anything until the air vent cover lock actually drops. Then you will know there's no pressure inside of the canner. And at any second now, this one should start moving. I see my mistake. I put it on 15 instead of 10. Well, I guess we're going to 15. Now, as you can see, it finally slows down and it will eventually stop rocking now that the eye is off. I hate I had to turn it off. I really wanted to show you it was going a little too fast so we could have turned the heat down a little bit more and let the rocking slow again because see it's still moving and we're just about stopped I wouldn't ever let it get that slow but a gentle rock is good so we'll just wait on the tab to come down it has completely stopped, but still don't touch it. Okay, y'all. I've never taken this canner to 15 pounds of pressure, but we're almost there. And this process will be the same whether you go to 5 pounds pressure or 10 pounds of pressure. It's totally the same. See, it's starting to make noise. We know it's about to do something, so we're just going to hang tight for just a second. Oh, I almost missed it. There we go. At this point, we know we can begin timing. So we will set our timer for, let's say, 10 minutes. Now, this should not jiggle, remember, more than one to three times a minute. I know it's jiggling a little too fast right now. So at this point we can bump our temperature down, but you don't want to bump it down so much that you get no jiggles per minute. You know you've lost too much pressure then and you have to start your timer all over. There's our third jiggle in a minute. Nine seconds left. So we had a little jiggle right there. One minute. So we had actually three little jiggles. That's okay. 
you just don't want it too high, but you don't want it too low. Okay, let's say we're done now. Our timer has gone off, so we just, just like the other one, just turn the heat off and do absolutely nothing. Don't touch it, don't move it, don't remove anything, don't unlock anything. You don't want a disaster in your kitchen. Okay, y'all, real quick while we're waiting on these to come down to zero pressure. Let's talk about noise. When you are a new beginner, some of the noises coming out of these canners, especially this Presto, or I've never canned with a mirror, maybe a Miro too. Some of the noises can be pretty scary. This canner, for whatever reason, is loud. And even with this canner, a lot of times you'll hear strange pops. Sometimes they're loud and you'll think, oh heavens, I just broke something. A jar just exploded. Not always. I have trying to think if it was a pressure canner. I don't think I've ever had anything break in my pressure canner. Huh? <laughs> Watch, I know something will break. But I have it in my water bath canner. And actually a jar breaking isn't as loud as you think. Sometimes you don't even know. But it will just pop. And that's just because the temperature is changing. It's getting hot. And they just pop. Sometimes it's jars. Usually it's the metal. Sometimes it's one of the pieces on the canner. So <laughs> I hid behind my counter the first time I can. I made the kids go way to the other end of the house. I threatened them not to enter, even act like they were coming into the kitchen. <laughs> Bless their hearts, they were little. I was stuck down behind the counter. I was scared to death. My heart was pounding. I survived, y'all. And you will too, I promise you. You're going to get through this. You can can. You can can. It just takes a little bit of a bravery, a little bit of patience. You can check out my blog, iamwithin.blogspot.com. And you can check out my very first canning adventure. I wrote about it. I had two posts, I do believe. So you can do this. Don't let those noises intimidate you. The vent lock has dropped on this one. So now, at this point, it's safe to take the weight and jiggler off. As you can hear, there's no sound coming out of it. If there were sounds coming from the stem, that would mean there was still just a little bit of pressure in there and you need to release this carefully. But it is now completely safe to open this canner. But if you've ever seen any of my videos, I do not open it right away. I usually give it 10 minutes and then I will loosen the lid and prop it open for another 10 minutes before I actually take the lid all the way off and take the jars out. I'm still waiting on the big mamma jamma. She takes forever, but she's almost to zero and we'll do the same thing with her. Let's remove the lid. This one, you just unlock it. And when you open it, because it's still hot inside, it will still steam, even though there is no pressure. Make sure you lift it away from you and let that steam escape so it doesn't burn you. It's very hot. So I set the lid on some pot holders to cool. Okay, y'all, this has come down to zero pressure. I know because the needle on my dial is all the way down at the little metal peg at zero. So at this point, we're ready to take off the weight. Now, I don't know if you have an American, all American pressure canner, but sometimes when it says zero and I try to take this weight off, air still comes out of there. If it's a lot, I will give it a few minutes. Sometimes I just gently hold it to the side, but I don't like to do that because if we're really canning and there is something in there in jars, it will siphon because you're releasing that pressure too quick. So if it's still making noise, when I move it a little bit, I give it a few more minutes and just let it come down gradually. Now, if I go to remove it, and there's noise, but it's just a little bit of noise. That's totally normal. Well, there wasn't that time, but sometimes there'll be just a little bit of noise and I will go ahead and take it off. But if it's a lot and I can tell there's still a lot of pressure, just give it a few more minutes. Now, once again, it's perfectly safe to open this canner, but again, I like to give it at least 10 minutes to sit and let the pressures regulate again before I unlock it. Let's pretend it's been 10 minutes. Let's go ahead and unlock it. Let's 
Sometimes the locks are tight, sometimes they're loose. A lot of times, for whatever reason, during the canning process, they loosen up some. It's okay. That's just the way it happens. Okay, and just like this canner, you remove the lid the same way. You tilt it away from you. You have to twist it a little bit. Tilt it away from you. Let some of that steam out. And sit it off to the side to cool. So, in conclusion, guys, this is what we know. We want to read our manuals, and we want to keep our manuals, no matter what canner we use. We also don't want to take anybody's word for it. Just like in life, guys. I try to get videos right, and I like for them to be perfect. That's what I meant earlier. But I'm human, guys. Technology is not perfect. Machines, everything. Nothing in this world is perfect. But... You can do it as right as you can and know as much as you can know if you will follow the manuals. Don't take anybody's word for canning. Do your own research and know what you should do. Don't take my word for it because I could lead you wrong. You guys, thank you so much for joining me. And until we meet again, may you be blessed. Mm -hmm. Love you guys.